Hello, everybody, and welcome to today's webinar about how you can empower a data-driven culture in your organization. To briefly introduce myself, my name is Vela Knechte, and I'll be I'm account manager for the Google Cloud team. And today, I'm delighted to be your host, but I'm not alone. Sanjay, can you please introduce yourself? Hey, guys, my name is Sanjay. I'm one of the account executives uh, at the Looker site. Thank you. And most importantly, our guest for today, Ben, can you please introduce yourself? Hey guys, I'm Ben. I'm head of business intelligence and data analytics at OneFit. At the same time, I'm helping Urban Sports Club and Fitogram uh, sister companies to transform their company to be data-driven and be digital uh, first-class citizens. Great. Thank you for that. Please, can we go to the next slide? Thank you. First, Looker will provide you with a very short 10 minute presentation about what Looker actually entails. Afterwards, we'll spend the rest of our time looking into the amazing use case of OneFit to see how you can empower a data driven culture. Below, you'll see a Q&A box. Please ask us any question during the presentation and afterwards we'll have some time to come back to them and answer them for you. Also, let's connect. Feel free to add us on LinkedIn and we would love to hear your story on what you thought of this webinar. So Sanjay, up to you. Please continue the presentation. Thank you, Vele. Uh, first, a little bit background about uh, Looker. Uh, we are a young company uh, founded in 2012 with the rise of uh, these modern data warehouses like uh, BigQuery, Snowflake, and uh, Redshift, recently acquired by uh, Google. Uh, worldwide, more than uh, 2,000 customers, 900 employees, and what we notice is that at least one in two customers integrate insights and experiences that go beyond uh, Looker. And our mission always has been to empower people with a smarter use of uh, data. This is a snapshot of our customer base in the Benelux. Uh, we are growing 50% uh, year on year. All these customers have made a strategic decision uh, to invest in a modern data warehouse. Uh, and by putting Looker on top as their data platform. Uh, one great example is OneFit, uh, and Ben will emphasize in today's conversation uh, what the value is that they are getting from uh, BigQuery and Looker. Cool, thank you, Sanjay. So I'm sure many of you that are in the school are familiar with data silos. In any organization that we talk to, we see that it doesn't matter if it's 100 different data sets spread over the organization to a couple of thousands of data sets spread out over the organization. And you can, and this actually gets very difficult to provide a holistic or real-time view of your organization. So you could prevent this with a modern data warehouse like BigQuery. That is a no ops serverless platform that can provide basically instead of firefighting uh, all the data problems that you're having, leading your data engineering team, helping them with generating data insights. Also on the right side, you see a couple of other benefits of a modern data warehouse. One major one is that it is built for any sort of data set and any sort of skill or data that you might accumulate now or in the future. And also it helps to reduce time significantly from data collection to data insights. And with that, Sanjay, I'll give the word back to you. Perfect. So uh, Vela talked about data warehouse modernization. Uh, I will emphasize on how Looker is leveraging your investment in a modern data warehouse. But before that, I want to take a step back uh, because in a lot of instances, we notice that uh, potential customers have made an investment uh, in time, uh, money, and resources to migrate uh, towards a modern data warehouse such as BigQuery. But their organization still continues to use tools and methodologies that serve them uh, when they lived in a time where data was still siloed uh, and where end users were not able to query their traditional data warehouses because it was too slow uh, and couldn't handle large data volumes. So as a result, uh, many teams within the organizations are continuing to do BI in the old way. So what are they doing? They are pulling data from a modern data warehouse like uh, BigQuery. They put it into a traditional BI tool they build cubes and they want to easily and quickly query directly into these cubes. And in the old days, this was very normal and this was expected uh, because uh, at that time, it was very normal that you are using an in-memory database 
uh, as you couldn't uh, directly query into a data warehouse as it was too slow. But as you know, uh, with these new modern data warehouses like BigQuery, this is no issue at all. However, many organizations that are still doing BI in the old way uh, are facing analytic silos. And this leads essentially to data that is disparate, end users that are super frustrated, uh, agility, uh, a lack of agility and insights that rarely turn into action. So, and that is why Google have invested in acquiring uh, Looker. Uh, Looker is a modern uh, BI platform that is born in the cloud generation. Looker was found in a time where cloud began to rise as a viable alternative uh, for companies to invest uh, instead of managing their own infrastructure. And as a result, uh, Looker created a 100% cloud native application uh, that takes the advantages and benefits of these new modern uh, data warehouses uh, instead of uh, focusing on legacy futures such as in-memory databases. So Looker sits on top of your data warehouse and leverage all that it has to offer. Not just super fast queries, uh, times over massive data sets, but also utilize new futures that uh, data warehouses like BigQuery offers like BQML and GIS. In addition, the Looker team created a semantic layer. Uh, we call it LookML that ingests your data schemas, enable your data team to create unified definitions uh, of your metrics. So now you have clarity, what is customer lifetime value and what is gross revenue, for example. Results remain consistent and trust in the data grows internally with your key stakeholders. In addition, you control who has access to what data uh, how right down to the row level. With LookML, end users can create their own queries uh, on data sets uh, you give them access to without having to know SQL. This empowers your stakeholders and frees up your data team to focus on mining the data to innovate on behalf of uh, the business. And last but not least, uh, Looker as a cloud native uh, has rich extensible API so that you can send data to where your stakeholders are allowing them to make decisions in real time. As a summary, uh, Vela talked about um, organizations that have a lot of uh, data sources and SaaS applications. Um, these SaaS applications create a lot of insights, uh, which lives in silos. Uh, and these modern organizations make a strategic decision to invest in a data warehouse like BigQuery. And then Looker comes on top with its semantic layer. Uh, we call it LookML, which is essentially uh, writing SQL in an evolved way, uh, positioning Looker uh, as a data platform, enabling companies to get access to four key data experiences. And Ben will emphasize on all these experiences. It started with modern BI and analytics. Uh, giving organizations uh, access to self-serve analytics uh, without having to know any technical language so that uh, end users are able to create their own reports uh, and dashboards, uh, integrate insights into tools that they are already using widely uh, so that you bring data where it gets consumed uh, so that you increase user adoption build data-driven workflows by feeding data in and out of uh, platforms, uh, utilizing Looker and automating this whole workflow, all the way up to building custom applications by utilizing Looker's APIs uh, on top of your data warehouse and potentially generating uh, additional revenue streams uh, from this initiative. And with this, I want to give to Veerle. Oh. Yes. Thank you, Sanjay, for that short introduction about Looker. A little reminder, please keep the questions coming below in the Q&A box, and we will be back to you shortly after Ben's presentation. So now, Ben, you're up next. Uh, thank you very much, Verla. It was uh, amazing. And also, Sanjay, you did a great talk about uh, Looker. I love BigQuery and Looker because these are two big uh, advancements in technology, in data technology, that empowered us to have a data-driven culture at one fit and which is the topic of my talk right now. And thank you very much for inviting me here to share our experiences and our key learnings and the challenges that we had on the way. 
I'm Ben. I'm head of data and business intelligence at OneFit. Uh, I came to OneFit as a senior data scientist, but then I realized the first thing that we should do is to set up a data department and analytics first. So here's the outline of my talk. And first, I'm going to tell you what will be the structure of my slides. And I'm going to introduce a methodology and then talk a little bit about what is OneFit. Huh? What do we do there? Which kind of data and services we have? And what are the business needs, expectations uh, from a business intelligence department? There, we are going to talk about a modern data stack, particular emphasis on BigQuery and Looker. And then I'm going to share with you our experiences, how to make first BI impact on the business directly, how to uh, pick the low hanging fruits to bring a lot of uh, impact. And then I'm going to tell you the challenges that we have uh, to build a data driven culture and how we overcame them and what are our key learnings. And then uh, to make our talk a little bit sweet and visual, I'm going to give you some example use cases with business values that you can directly implement in your companies, in your departments. So our methodology is Carl. Everybody knows Carl, especially if you are in uh, human resources. Right in human resources field, uh, there's a Carl method that you use in interviews. You ask uh, questions to interviewers. So the C stands for context. And in our talk, in the rest of my talk, I'm going to use context for every chapter. Context of this entire talk is basically companies seeking for data transformation. And the actions that we took about this thing, basically to implement best practices from industry. And the results are basically the most important result here that we are going to talk about in the rest of my talk is the data driven culture, which results in enhanced business decisions, which results in money. <laughs> so our key learning here is that it worth every single penny that you spend on data driven culture. And what is OneFit guys? This is my company and we are a unique platform that we give a service. Uh, to our members, a service that they can work out everywhere with one membership. Just in Amsterdam, they can take classes or train more than 500 gyms and studios. These are not only fitness, but it's like yoga, boot camp, dancing, swimming, and it's unlimited. In order to just book a class, you just join the platform and then you search for a location or you can just browse among the locations that are there. You can filter it. You can go to map and define a certain distance. And then based on that, you can also define with some uh, class categories such as boot camp or uh, uh, CrossFit and so on. And then you show the results and then you will see a bunch of classes and you go to a class, click on it and then book the class. And Matthias, our dear product manager, he is booking the class. And then you can also invite your friends. As you can see, in every step, there is data. In every step, data is locked and we have customer data. We have data about partner studios. We have data about classes. We have data about the relationships between classes and studios. We have data about members and uh, their friendships and much, much more than that. I came to such a company and I had a lot of business needs and expectations from me as the founder of the business intelligence department. So let's use our car method here as well. What were the business needs? Basically, they want me to assess the company situation and build a data roadmap. And of course, a link between product services and the data directly. And to build a trust in data and the reports that were flying around because nobody believed what is, which one is correct. The reason was that there was no single version of truth. And there was different company KPIs and everybody was reporting a different number for different company KPIs. So the context was like, we needed to translate business goals into actionable unique metrics. And always doing all of this, we had to have an operational excellence for ad hoc requests. You cannot wait two weeks or two months to just result uh, to report a number. And while I was assessing the company, company situation, I saw that, hey, first of all, there is no data warehouse. So there is data, but it's laying on spreadsheets, CSVs, text documents, various databases here and there, and in various services, you know, and even some of the services, nobody knew who has the access to it and the passwords were not really known. And I was like, okay, there is no single version of truth. There is no centralized reporting. 
And even I saw that some of my colleagues were drawing handmade charts, handmade geographical heat maps to show like sales, like to show the high demand in terms of sales in certain areas of the cities. And I was like, no, we have to make this company a first class data citizen. And the action that I come up with together with my team is a modern data stack. What a modern data stack uh, contains is first of all, separate to separate the concepts and the modules as much as possible. So interdependence are very well defined. And then we should always keep operational excellence in mind. So when we have an ad hoc request, we should really answer it as quick as possible with subsequent query answering. How to build such a system? So these are the components of a modern data stack. It's very similar to the slice that Sanjay mentioned. So this is the anatomy of a modern data stack. You have data sources. They are coming to a distributed data platform. So you can use ELT or ETL. I go for uh, ETL to be honest, uh, sorry, ELT. And then uh, here you can even use like uh, very famous uh, tools like uh, Kafka or off the shelf tools that are automating all of these things like Fivetran, even Stitch. And then this is all coming to a data warehouse. And once you have this all data coming to one warehouse, you can define the relationship between them and you can install any application layer on top. It can be business intelligence tools or it can be machine learning apps. It can be elastic search engine. It can be anything that you guys like. The key point here is to separate the concepts so that it gives us operational excellence. The results here in our case was one fits data infrastructure. We have around 20 different data sources, customer tickets and our production database. We have data coming from analytics and our pipe drive CRM. We have our ad data coming from Google ads and Facebook ads, Instagram ads and, 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 and more than that. And also we have like tens of gigabytes of uh, app usage analytics are streaming into our platform. Every day we have more than 60 million rows coming in. And we are, we are using Kafka and Stitch and maybe in near future we are planning to uh, shift to Fivetran. We're using this distributed data integration platform. We bring our data to Data Warehouse, which is our famous component, Google BigQuery. Thank you very much guys to invent this thing. And once we have this all data coming in, we can define the relationships in between them. And then we can feed this data into our Looker or directly BigQuery BI engine, or we can feed it to our CRM system like Salesforce, or we can feed it to our machine learning apps. Here, I had to talk about why BigQuery on top of every amazing thing that Sanjay and Verle mentioned. First of all, it is Google Cloud ecosystem. So it is an authentic, it's an authentic fit to the rest of the services that we have been using, you know, like uh, the map service that in the Google Cloud and like the Kubeflow system and all the other services that we have been using. On top, it has fast query streaming data in real time and it helps us to predict business outcomes easily with built-in machine learning functions, you know, it's all serverless. And also it helps us to schedule queries and views so that we can have performance and we can have real-time deduplication. And why Looker? So we went on a long list of maybe 10 business intelligence tools. I will not give their names to you. Most of them, you guys know about it. And we ended up Looker. The reason is that it has, it, it fits our uh, data stack, modern data stack perfectly. So you have an agile modeling layer where you can have a version control and advance the connections to any kind of database and you have user management and security. And on the application, it has a web interface that makes everything so easy to self-service exploration, visualization and exporting the results. It gives us embedded analytics, which I'm gonna talk about in the rest of my talk. It gives us amazing deliveries and deliveries of uh, business insight via scheduled delivery systems. And on top of this thing, it has an API. So if you wanna automate things, use Looker API. Here, like a big view, how it also fits to our modern data stack is that we can use any SQL database and no heavyweight transformation required. And we just define all the custom business logic that we have, as Sanjay said, in the Looker's agile data modeling layer, which is called LookML. Here, it is centralized. 
we know where we should go for a certain logic and we don't need to have different weird uh, definitions here and there. In, as a result, we have a single version of truth. We have single place that we define the logic and we have a BI tool that everyone, everybody can use for dashboards, for explorations and to get uh, advanced insights. And what's the wrap up here? How to build a modern BI infrastructure? The context is the company seeking for data transformation. And the action is you define data sources carefully, you build your data warehouse, BigQuery, and you install BI engine on top, which is Looker. And the results is single version of truth and you have a modern system for analytics. Here our learnings was, hey, separate the concepts as much as you can and always keep in mind operational excellence and use ELT if possible. And once you have this, in a few months, we were able to install this thing and uh, we got amazing training from Looker. That was really cool. It was all easy. And then we had expectations on us. How can we create first BI impact on business? What is the context? The context is like people don't know the value of data. They smell it. They feel it. Data is something valuable. What, what is it? And they would like to know, okay, we are spending money on this department and these advanced tools, but what's its impact on business directly? They want to see ROI of this. And there are a lot of doubts and questions around the value of BI. So if you have worked in such positions, you will know what I mean. And the action was like, hey, first of all, assess critical concepts for quick impact on business. My personal action there was to define company KPIs and actionable metrics. And the second action was to translate basic business needs to data, what every department, what managers need, what our CEO needs. And we define low hanging fruits like investor reporting. And there was lots of manual investor reporting happening every month, which is taking days of our finance department. And I know we can do these things so quick at the uh, via help of Looker. And the exec executive board reportings were also like a mess that was happening every Monday and things had to manual, somebody has to download the data, compile it on uh, Excel sheet uh, or spreadsheets and then present it every Monday. And I was like, hmm, this is something that we can do very quick impact. And the third one was just check around, is there something to automate? Because this is the power of BigQuery and Looker. And we saw that community success department needs something from us. And the results of the first one, the company KPIs were just uh, shown on a dashboard. So just to let you know, all the data that you are gonna see here and the rest of my talk is fake and uh, it is anonymous. But as a result, we have this kind of uh, company KPI dashboards that not only on a spreadsheet that we show, each other, show to each other on Mondays, it's a live dashboard. You can see it any time in any meeting. You just open it, it's there. You can show it to your colleagues and you can immediately start discussing. And this was a breakthrough in the executive board. And then we said that, hey, like one of the investor reported things was like, we have to always check new market potentials. And this, that's it. And that's so you don't need to draw heat maps uh, anymore, like manually. But here, Google just lets you, you can check what's the inventory demand in different kinds of the city based on the partner zip code. And you check the inventory demand by the member zip code and you can see where you should act immediately. And the third one was like, we saw that the, uh, we have a big customer community success department. And every time when a member calls them, they have to go to their Zendesk and from there they have to find the ID. And from the ID, they have to go to our back office and there see the customer data. And it was like uh, several uh, like clicks taking almost a minute for in every customer call. And we're like, hey, we can automate this thing by member closeup and via help of Looker, we can also connect this thing directly to Zendesk and which can show as an embedded pop-up. Whenever a member calls, this pops up. You don't need to click anything. And these few tricks ended up really big impact on business in just few weeks. Not much. The context was business expectations were high and there were doubts and questions around how we can be valuable to the company. The action we did was assess critical metrics, define low hanging fruits and automate if you can. The results were efficient decision making in the board, monitoring basic company KPIs, a lot of satisfied managers and the most importantly, BI proved its value for the next steps. And the learnings were be pragmatic, 
be opportunistic. Don't go for 100% uh, like accuracy or 100% ideal cases. Just get the low hanging fruits and use the power of data infrastructure that you have, BigQuery and Looker, and communicate, communicate, communicate with the rest of the company. Once you have these basics, then of course now it comes to how, how to transform the rest of the company, every employee, to build a data-driven culture. The context is that, can the rest of the company benefit from uh, the, the infrastructure that we built? Not only few managers or investors, but all the company. And also, is analytics scalable to the rest? Can we democratize it? Can, can uh, other employees just go and find what they want? But at the same time, we know that every department has different needs, they have different definitions, they have different metrics. And how to ensure no overwhelming requests on the data department, right? Because if you make everybody data driven, and then you will get a lot of questions and you have to answer them, you cannot say no to them. And meanwhile, doing all of these things, you have to ensure the privacy and the security of the data. You don't want to mess up uh, GDPR. And the action here was like, hey, we have to define the personas of the platform. We have to have these business users and we have to train them. And we got a lot of help here from Looker experts as well. Thank you very much, guys. And you have to work on cross-functional adoption of data. You have to democratize the access that they, everybody can access what they need only. And importantly, you have to create self-service model so that you can come up with data ambassadors in every department that they, they can be data experts based on their domain. And we define the personas of the platform. In our case, like first class citizens were analysts and data scientists, of course. And then we saw that product managers use it quite often. And followed by marketers, particularly performance marketers, they love to analyze data. They love to see how their campaigns and ads are doing. And of course, sales managers. As an action, after defining those groups, we gave proper training to each of them, few times. We told them, what is, how is it going? And we worked on cross-functional adoption of data. We defined different things with every department and we defined different definitions of metrics. metrics. We created self-service models for every department. And first of all, we make it accessible via dashboards and then explore to them, which they can drag and drop and come up with the insights that they have been looking for in just a few minutes. And for this thing, the, maybe the most important action we did was to find ambassadors. We trained them. We used them also to improve the self-service models. And they have been the, basically the free PR, internal PR in the company for data. And those ambassadors are like the seeds that you put in a farm and they blossom and they become tree. And the fruit of this tree is a data-driven culture. The result is although we have few admins and developers in the team, less than six, to be honest, we have a duplicate there, but we have 11 content creators. Here, five, six additional people are coming from these five, six departments that we use. They are creating the content like dashboards, explorers. They are doing a lot. And it's not just like random. As you can see here, 83% of our dashboards are actively used every week. Only 70% of them are stale. However, even when we look at this 70%, I see them, some of, some of them are like quarterly or annual or biannual KPIs that you just need to look at them once in a month or once in a three months. Actually, majority of this 70% is active as well. And when you check the weekly querying users, although like in the system, we have around 20 to 23 users, you can see weekly average 19.3 of them are active. So almost the entire like, company, every week, they're going, checking, doing something on Looker, which shows our success. As a wrap up, the context was, can an entire company benefit? And the actions we did was define the personas, different needs, make data accessible, and find ambassadors. The results were data-driven culture in less than 18 months, and efficient business decisions, and a focused business intelligence department that we can do advanced analytics like machine learning. And our learnings here were, hey, define your mission very well. Trust your colleagues, democratize data, let it go, 
trust them, they will find the correct answer. Don't be monarch or uh, like a very uh, protector of your data. Let it go with proper user management and privacy. And keep in mind, ambassadors are really important. Now we are coming to latest chapters of me, some little fun and business cases that we can talk about it. And I'm going to give you three chapters here about uh, the advanced use cases that we did. I told you, right? So once we make the company data-driven, uh, as the analytics department or department, we can focus on really advanced analytics. One of them was retention, and the other one was data monetization, and the third, how can we use Looker blocks? Under retention, the first case was partner retention. And a few uh, months ago, um, we had a global player coming to Netherlands market for uh, fitness, and there was a fierce competition we have the danger of partners churning. And the action that we took immediately was, hey, we can bring our partners back via sharing some data insights and business insights with our partners. Nobody else is doing that. And we can use BI as a sales tool to not only for retention, but also for acquisition of the partners. And the result was like, we were dominant in the market. We were superior to the uh, competitor. We increased partner happiness and the S increased immediately, we stopped the chart. And here our learning was like, take responsibility as early as you can, and business intelligence can be a sales tool. Here, what we did was like uh, um, some partner insights. We showed them what, how partners are doing with us and what is demanding for them and how is their overall activity and how they can enhance their business with us. We just shared their data with them. And this was working amazing. The second was about member retention. Again, we had this fierce competition and members were charming. We said, hey, we can use BI. Here, whenever I say BI is Looker, actually, using as a CRM tool to automate member insights. And the result was dominance in the market again. We had personalized CRM campaigns for the first time in the company's history. And as a result, we stopped the churn, which brought more than half million annual money to the company. And the learnings was like, of course, take responsibility. BI can be a retention tool because Looker allows you to do so. The cases that we did there was like CRM member segmentation. We segmented the members by using Looker, which kind of sports they do and which kind of transitions they have between different sport categories. And we can automatically get this and connect to our CRM tool via Zapier or Google Sheets. And then we can just automate all of this thing and then the email campaigns will be just sent, personalized. The second use case was data monetization. We always knew that we are sitting on top of something very valuable, right? And we said, can we monetize our data? Yes. The answer was like, yes. Which action we need? We can use embedded analytics that Looker gives us off the shelf. And the results were like, we made our partners happiness, B2B and partners and also the fitness studios. And what we get in return, also additional revenue streams. And our learning was like, hey, be innovative. Data is not the new oil. Data is the new cacao, which was used as a currency in, the, in Aztecs and Incas time. And data is the new cacao. What we did there was like, hey, we have this partner portal. Our partner can just log in and they can see their check-ins and bookings check-in history, invoices, reviews, and support. And then we said, there we add business insights. It's an embedded Looker dashboard, real time, and they can see anything they like. They can see their revenue, they can see their drop-ins, they can see their check-ins, they can see the demographics of the members that are visiting them, and so on and so on and so on. Of course, we always care about GDPR and privacy of the data. We just share with them what belongs to them and we create additional revenue. The second was like, we had lots of companies, B2B companies working with OneFit. So those companies, they have their employees uh, uh, using OneFit and those companies offering those employees as uh, like employee benefit program, web program and OneFit membership. And of course they would like to know at some point, is that working? <laughs> And then we said, yes, we can showcase this thing without unveiling, without revealing the personal data. We can just give insights what your members are doing, what your employees are doing, apologies. 
And we automated all of these reports to them via Looker API. Um, we scheduled those reports and it's going to those companies and they were more than happy to receive this thing and pay for it. The result was like additional revenue streams. The third use case, the advanced use case, we're like, okay, can we make use of Looker community? And the context was like, hey, we don't want to reinvent the wheel every time. We're a small data team, a handful of people. And uh, we are very happy that the company is self-managing right now when it comes to data. But we don't need to reinvent everything from the beginning. What did we do as an action was to use Looker Marketplace. And the result was like increased speed of delivery and immense reusability. The learnings was like always check if the community has an answer for your case. And indeed they have. They have something called Looker Blocks. And we wanted to create some uh, like fancy dashboard for our customer tickets coming by Zendesk. We're like, oh my God, there's a Zendesk Looker block. And we just installed it. We just changed a few lines of code. In two hours, we had three amazing dashboards that our community success managers can just look at it and understand how it's going. Normally, this should take, this would, would be taking around two sprints, which is four weeks. Can you imagine four weeks time is decreased to two hours via Looker blocks. And the recent one that I really love it is data dictionary. Here you can see on the left, we have different kind of models that self-service models. One of them is CRM model made only for CRM department. And there they would like to know the, the definitions of the metrics that they have and the descriptions. Sometimes, you know, they would like to give this thing to maybe a new onboarding members. We would like to check it if there's a discrepancy uh, or if it is opposing any other definition, any other model. We're like, how do we do this thing? And bang, we have Looker blocks. You just install it, you do a few clicks, and then for CRM model, you have all the description for the metrics that you need. Like, for example, filters B2B versus B2C currently, and the description says checks if the members is currently a B2B or a B2C member. And then you also have the type of this, and you even have the SQL query for that, that if you want to be very concise and precise. Amazing. Thank you very much, guys. I really, really enjoyed this talk. If you have any questions, uh, let me know. I'm happy to answer. Thanks. Thank you, Ben, so much for this great and inspiring story. I really hope Ben provided you with some insight and it sparked your interest to start using Looker, but not only Looker, we hope it also sparked your interest to start using OneFit, most importantly. Uh, we will now <laughs> dig into your questions. So please keep them coming into the Q&A box below. If we don't get them in time, then we will follow up with you shortly afterwards. Cool, guys. Let's go to the Q&A.